Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of love in you. Doctor, always, always walk around in your shock form. Get that value out of distressing, man. So when your terror touches somebody, they're going to scream. There's somebody over there. Going to walk towards them. They're going to scream. They're going to say, yikes. We got two people over here. <laughs> oh, good. Made a good sprint burst right there. Oh, shit. I thought she'd go back over the pallet. It's all good. If you hit a shock and then a melee, you get a ton of points for it. Highly recommend that. Oh, well played. Dang, I'm actually so sad. Both of them are in really bad spots. I just didn't get a hit on either of them. I'm looking for this person because they're out in the open. And you can always keep shocking people. Try to get them tier 3. Because once they're tier 3, it forces them to actually... Uh, you see where they're running like that with their shoulders shut? That's when they're tier 3. Because I'm here as a king, it actually uh, helps you get it really quick. There's no point to just keep shocking somebody because you don't get a lot of points for it after that. Ooh, well played. That's a good dodge by them. There we go. You can also shock to deny actions because during the uh, shock animation, there's 2.5 seconds where they cannot vault a window or drop a pallet. So Doctor has like, a, he has a nice little depth to him. Like he has a good bit of mechanics, but he's still pretty simple. Like in his core. It's like I shock, they can't drop the pallet, and then I go hit them, basically. So he's really good against people that want to lose and stuff. Like I do that, and she actually just can't drop the pallet. Like she didn't go, she didn't get to the pallet, but she can't drop it in that way. There we go. Nice. And also Doc, skill checks are pretty difficult when you're playing against Doc. That's a norm. If they're in your terror radius, it's even worse. All right. You can tell also if they're tier three on the bottom left hand side, there's a disco ball. A disco ball when they're maxed out. And if you just sit there with your shock form, they will scream. Like you don't have to be doing it. If they're in a locker, they don't scream. That's the only uh, the only time they don't. So like always check lockers around stuff because it's a pretty common hiding spot for people, especially versus Doc. There's the injured survivor, so I'm going to go for this person over here that screamed. I have a uh, one of the add-ons for Iridescent King, is that whenever they scream, you see their R for two seconds after. Notice how like they actually can't drop that pallet. There you go. They couldn't drop it until then. They had 2.5 seconds. So I actually got a hit in. And then they just ran straight into me. Because sometimes people will get mind game not by you, but by they'll, they'll think it's your apparition, not you. So it's actually kind of funny. All right, I'm gonna put her right next to this. So when she gets saved from the hook, there's a nice little treat for her when she's dead. Feels good, man. I see somebody over there healing. This calling is actually a pretty good option on Doc because you can also see people snapping out of it, which is super nice. There we go, using my using it to scout a little bit. This person's actually someone I already hooked. Dang, I didn't get to hit him. Feels bad. It's all good. I'm gonna go for this person right here, cause uh, that's another that's a unique hook I don't have. You can actually prevent them from saving as well just by shocking them. If they get really close to you like that, it's a really easy way to dodge the uh, dodge the shocks. So I was well played by her moving really close to me, cause you ha you do have to like the swap takes a moment. There you go. She's tier three now, so I might as well chase her. You have you have decreased movement speed while you're shocking as well. That's a very valid point. Also, I saw my apparition looking at the, um, the quad editor over there, so I'm actually going to break this. Nah, it's a unique hook. I care more about getting the unique hooks than I do about the uh, like denying someone on the gen. So I'm going to focus on trying to get this meg right now. I think she dropped another pallet. No, she did. She will keep screaming. Hi. She actually ran into me. As I said, like sometimes they'll get mind gamed and think it's like your apparition, but it's actually you. So let's sort of run right into you. Especially because when you have distressing and a couple add-ons, dude, your terror radius is like almost omnipresent. It's so hard to avoid. So it mind games you so hard, man. It's so hard. Look at them tapping that gen. There's actually an apparition looking this way. I'm gonna shock over here. Yep, somebody screamed. Here we go. Just a scout. Because um, your apparitions always look at someone, kind of like a hag trap does. I'm gonna go for the Claudette here, not for the Meg. I think I've already hooked this Claudette, but uh, actually I haven't. Jesse Yates. 
Oh wow, hit him there, that sucks. Oh, and that's a fake pallet. <laughs> they probably tried to pray, they probably tried to spam space, or I had to vault over it, but it's actually fake. So um, always break pallets as dock as well, because the uh, the apparition pallets are super, super tricky. Like that one right there. You can see that they're apparitions because they're yellow. But for these survivors, it's super difficult not to see. There's another Claudette. She's going to try hiding. You really can't hide next to dock. So I'm actually going to shock this person. There you go, got them a screen. Shock this person. Oh wow, I didn't even actually, uh, didn't actually go through the pallet, Omega Wool. Good mechanics, by the way. Scratch marks be everywhere. I still have trouble tracking scratch marks. She went upstairs, actually. But it's all good. I'm gonna go back over here. I'm sure I'm cool. <laughs> she actually ran right back into me. That's Curtis Print Asylum for you. She's actually not insane right now, so I'm gonna shock her a bit. There, now she's insane. Dang. Yep. There we go. Nice. There's also add-ons on Doc that a lot that they are um, exhausted with their tier three insanity. So Doc has a lot of really weird nuances and add-ons that make him so difficult to play versus. Alright, there's my apparition looking in that direction. So even though I see scratch marks over there, I'm gonna assume somebody's behind here. Yep, somebody screamed. They're probably running towards the left now. But I got that pound out of the way, it'll help me later on. Yep, there they are. Keep in my shock form, because even if you don't know where they are via like scouting with your shocks, your terror radius will eventually make them scream. Because every time they advance a tier into madness, they'll scream. And as far as tier 3 goes, they scream like... I don't know how often exactly, but they scream often, so like, they'll prioritize trying to snap out of it or something. There we go. Hello. Oh, it's a fake pallet. They tried though. They tried. After realizing it was fake, they turned around to go for the window. Is their next best option? And they're probably surfing around the building? Yeah. There's someone over there. I can tell by the apparition looking at them. There we go. Played. I, I thought I didn't know if that was a fake. Or not. But as I said, I pri I really do prioritize breaking on of that stuff. I'm actually gonna move around this way because I knew she's gonna walk this way. Yep. Oh wow. Okay, so I lost her and I found somebody else. Rip. Sometimes when you try to when you try to overstay your welcome and like predict where someone goes, they'll just go the other way. Don't waste your time. <laughs> TBH. Nice. I get those lunges in, boy. Okay. Oh, hello. There was a survivor from earlier. She's still injured. Because you really, you cannot self-care until you snap out of it. That's like a really big detail to point out. You cannot self-care until you snapped out of it. So a lot of survivors will um, still be injured. I'm seeing some blood. Blood, follow the blood. Stay in my shock form, they'll eventually scream. Continue to follow the blood, there we are. Oh, hello. Well, I will happily chase you. She's injured, but I'll take you. Stutter, man. I haven't had to deal with a stutter all day, but I'm, I'm struggling with it, dude. I'm struggling with it. Wow! They saved the person over here, but they never took out the totem? That's so weird. 
That's so weird, man. I guess they just immediately ran. I remember I hooked someone right next to that totem in hopes that they would get it, but they didn't even bother. Interesting. What's up? Oh, you're my unique hook. Hello. <laughs> totem, get the totem. Ren, I offered them the totem, but they didn't want it. I tried to be a good guy and give them what they wanted. They didn't take it. Did she jump off. Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. There we go. I'm just gonna take a hit here. She's already in Sandy 3, but she's not close to a pallet or anything to deny. She's gonna go towards the window, I think. Oh, she went back upstairs, okay. Really risky call. So I believe, oh, that powder over there was real. Yep. There you go, they got the totem now. Okay, yeah, I, I, just, I suspected she quick and quieted me there, so I didn't jump off, because what most killers would do when they do that, they'll just immediately jump off. So that was a really smart, um, quick and quiet by her. Very smart. Very smart. There you go. That's my fourth unique hook. Feels good, man. I think the other two are like basically dead hook. And that one's still running around injured. Like they haven't even self cared or anything, or they haven't found a teammate to self care to heal them. I'll just move towards this person. The apparition's looking that way. I'm gonna try scouting out. Scouting out real quick. Oh, there we are. See, I, I could have spent my time looking around, but it's always good to just scout with your shock. Notice also, I'm no longer gaining deviousness points for shocking a cap to it but you can still gain a lot of deviousness from doing your shock to your melee which gives you 500 points it's called uh it's called attack bonus i'm actually max deviousness okay so now i just want like brutality you gain brutality a lot by uh breaking pallets breaking gens hitting survivors stuff like that there we go i'll let her get the save if that's what she wants to do i'll just trade places There we go. I'll just let her reset. Actually, I don't mind going for her again. She still has another uh, phase to go on the hook. This person's dead hook, I think. Also, Doc can reliably um, slug people because whenever he, uh, whenever they're insane, they scream constantly on the ground. They're in this corner. Nope. There we go. Remember, they will not scream, and they um, can't be shocked when they're in lockers. So a common place to hide versus doctor is in lockers. So usually if I don't find them via screaming or don't hear some form of whimpering, I will shock around and look for them. All right, now if I was being super tryhard, I could have just slugged a uh, Blastantine and then go find Jesse Ains via, like, like she'll scream eventually if I keep running around in the terror radius, you know? She actually ran around the building going straight for the save, I believe. Don't see her anywhere. She must have went back in the building. But that's okay. As long as I stay in my shock form, she'll eventually scream if she's in my territory long enough. And that's kind of how the doc rolls. I'm going to go and break this guy over here. Might as well. Break that gen in there too. Get all that uh, brutality points. There we go, nice. I'm gonna go for the Meg here. Over the uh, Claudette. I like to oscillate them, you know? I don't like to just immediately tunnel that person, because I know how that feels, and I, I really hate that, personally, so I'd rather do this. Or I should go after the person that saved, you know, allow the other person the chance to uh, snap out of it, heal, reset, and then go for this person. Sure, just trying to play really fair, honestly. There we go. Whew, my little stutter coming back. Alrighty. I think uh, Jesse Yanes is dead hook. So. R.I.P. R.I.P. There we go. Alright, now it's so a blast snapped out of it. They healed up. There's the hatch, actually. And I see where they're running to, so I'll be able to chase them. And uh, if they make it to the hatch, they make it to the hatch. If they don't, it's okay. Or if, if they do make it to the hatch, it's okay. 
If they don't, I get a 4K. Kind of how it's rolling right now. by the way yo what's up Kern? didn't answer your question earlier rock yeah that's why i was out for a while among other things but i'm getting better dude i'm glad man it seems like a lot of people feel that way around this season Kern. i definitely think it's the weather i mean i'm not saying it's because of the weather i'm saying that seasonal depression is very common and a lot of people have seasonal depression so yeah you know it just it's just kind of the time of year people feel very dreary around this time but i'm sure you'll perk up come summer and I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm trying to, to, you know, diminish or uh, say it's not that bad or anything. I'm trying to say that, you know, it's just something that will happen. All right, that was a nice little Doctor 4K, dude. GG. See the, see the peeps. Yeah, pretty mid-rank. I mean, what do I expect? What do I expect? A pretty wholesome game, though. The the first person that died, I actually saved pip, and all three of these guys pipped. And then I almost got a 32K. I was really close. I think I was just missing some chase points. There we go. Missing 1,000 chase points. What actually bit me? So, so it goes. All right, GG.